Hallelujah. Children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Bearing the judgment upon the children of Israel, of the children of Israel, upon his heart before the Lord continually. May the Lord give such grace to us as a people. As we come before him praying for the house, bearing the judgment, that means praying intelligently, praying with wisdom, praying according to the Holy Ghost for every person in the house. Is that not wonderful? It will be so wonderful. Somebody, wherever he or she is, praying accurately for me. And I pray accurately for you. Calamities will be over. Praise the name of the Lord. Things will be detected early enough and resolved. Blessed be God forever. That's the Urim and the Tumim. And then we check Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 8, verse 7. Verse 6 says, And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. And he put upon him the coat and gathered him with the girdle and clothed him with a robe and put the effort upon him and gathered him with the curious girdle of the effort and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastplate upon him and he put in the breastplate, the urim and the tumim. And he put the meter upon his head. And also upon the meter, even upon his forehead, did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as the Lord commanded him. You see the heart of wisdom, and you see the mind of wisdom. The Urim and the Tumim, the breastplate of judgment, the heart of wisdom. The meter and the golden crown, the mind of wisdom. A sound mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Numbers 27, verse 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, Joshua the warrior, the leader of Israel, will stand before Eleazar the priest. At that time there was a clear division. Joshua was not a priest. He had strength, but no insight, revelation. And these graces must come together. Of course, one of the, God brings us in a body to bring together the different expressions of himself. Jesus had all the graces within him. So we read on. Verse 21, and he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of the Urim and the Tumim. That means after the judgment of the light and perfection. After the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. 
at his word shall they go out. Whose word? Eliezer. At his word shall they go out. At his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. Now, the Urim and the Tumim is a type of walking in the Spirit, knowing the Holy Ghost, getting light and direction from the Spirit. At that light and direction, you go out. At that light and direction, you come in. So we are supposed to be guided by discernment. We are supposed to know what we ought to do. All the congregation are not supposed to go in and go out without the judgment of the Urim and the Tumim. Verse 22. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. There are many other times in Israel, as we found in Ezra and Nehemiah, when the returnees came back from Babylon and they were trying to trace their genealogy and they were those whose names were not found. They couldn't trace their genealogy or that they were supposed to be of the priestly class. It was said in Ezra 2.63 and Nehemiah 7.65, the Teshita said they should be excluded from the holy bread until there arise a priest who can, through the judgment of the Urim and the Tumim, determine their authentic genealogy. So the who remember the tomb him can tell who is a believer and who is not. If the who remember the tomb him is functioning, no liar, claimed believer can come to the church. But it has happened. It has happened several times to diverse congregations of believers. Somebody comes and tell a story and just tell a story and cook up a story and we and people act. But if the Urim and the Tumim is at work, it can trace genealogy. It can know whether this man belongs to the house or not, or a fake. How do fake people appear? They come as wolves in sheep clothing. They even can speak in tongues. It's part of sheep clothing. And smile. Hallelujah. The Lord is good, brother. How would you be confused? Urim and light and perfection. It's not something we can rationalize, wish away. It's essential for our work with God. It will cause the moving forward of the house. It will save the house. It will save the nation, Nigeria, from so many things. As we are entering into spiritual warfare, on account of this nation, there are many things going on in the corridors of power that the Lord will make bare to his people. Some of these things have already been seen and dismissed in the spirit. That is why I know their hands cannot perform their enterprise. There are things being dislodged, but we, as a corporate body of Christ must get into this place of prayer where whatever is being discussed anywhere against the future of Christianity in Nigeria is terminated, dead on arrival, because the people are praying. And are praying guided by the Urim and the Tumim. They know the mind of the Spirit. They know what the church ought to be doing. Oh, glory, hallelujah. The church is not supposed to be responding to fear. The church must be responding to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 3. I have 
provide this foundation of what this is in Scripture and how that relates to our work with God. Let's look at the constraints. We can't take all this at once. We take as much as we can, and hopefully whenever we have the next opportunity, we go on. Because we're going to look at the constraints, and then we're going to see when it is in operation and how it works out as a lesson for each and every one of us to stand effectively on our watch. Because the watchman is a priest. The watchman is a prophet. And through the graces of watchmen, the kingly graces are exercised. Victory is for the church. Victory is for you. May you be strengthened with might, given the capacity to resist the devil, to withstand all the wires of the devil, having done all to stand. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's take Zechariah chapter 3 and hopefully wrap up there. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. If the high priest of Israel is resisted, what can the nation do? Nothing. No intercessor. No deliverance. No moving forward. A stalemate. We're talking about effective functioning of the priesthood. Standing on your watch. Here is a vision of Joshua, the high priest. Standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. That means God himself initiated an intervention. If the priesthood is corrupted, who can pray? The Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. That means because of Jerusalem, because of my heritage, because of my inheritance that stands likely in ruin without a, without a priest coming forth, the Lord rebuke thee. For Zion's sake, I will not rest. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not hold my peace until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? These guys are just coming from the heat of the furnace. Of the Babylonian and Persian affliction. And here is the devil resisting them, preventing the work of the temple to be raised at the critical time in history. Is not this a brand? Plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. That was the problem. That was the challenge. The challenge was the filthy garment of the, the defiled priesthood. 
And it's very important to stand on the watch because we are going to connect just one related scripture that's in Leviticus to this to help us appreciate the, pic, the, the fuller picture. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel of the Lord. Stood before the Lord for favors from the Lord to seek the right ways of the Lord. But he was hindered. He could not function because of the garments. Our character is important. Our life is important. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. God initiated a process of cleansing. Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. Amen. Why? So that you can stand as my watchman effectively. So that you can stand to function as you ought to function. So there must be the cleansing of the priesthood. Praise the name of the Lord. For us to function with full effectiveness. Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. I want to believe that the Urim was demobilized. Every garment of the priesthood was not functioning. So he needed a change of raiment. And I said, let them set a fair meter upon his head. We read about that fair meter. Set a fair meter. Put a mind of wisdom upon his head so that he can think rightly. Let them set a fair meter upon his head. That's a white, white, woolish garment. Put it upon his head. And clothed, and clothed, sorry, and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, If thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, Amen. Walk in my ways, Keep my charge. These are not, they are loaded words. We would explore those words at some other day. But if thou will walk in my ways, if thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house. That means then thou can be brought to the place of discernment where you can effectively use the Urim and the Tumim. Because the Urim and the Tumim is the breastplate of judgment. Without that breastplate of judgment, you cannot judge the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you will walk in my ways, if you will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house and shall also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Christ revealed. I will bring forth my servant the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. What stone? The Urim, the Tumim. They are the stones. Upon one stone, seven eyes. Clear visions. What if the seven eyes on one stone, the seven eyes on the other stone, Hallelujah. And as many stones, seven eyes. May the Lord grant us understanding. May the Lord expand us and reveal. Let 
upon one stone, that one stone in your spirit, man. Seven eyes. To see into God. So that you can walk in wisdom. So that you can be saved. So that you can be more effective in your spiritual warfare. So that you can put to flight the devil. So that you can be one step ahead of the devil. Before he takes off, you are demolishing his asanas. Because you have capacity to rebuke strong nations from afar off. Praise the name of the Lord. Behold, I will engrave the gravings thereof, said the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Whatever is troubling the land, I'm going to remove it in one day. When one stone turns to seven eyes, amen, the iniquity of that land will be taken in one day. Glory, hallelujah. And in that day, said the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Every man and his neighbor under his own vine. That was the golden age of Solomon's reign. When Solomon ruled and there was no threat to Israel, the Bible says every man under Solomon's regime sat under his vine. And was instructed under his fig tree. When you become all sufficient. When the vine and the fig tree. The vine brings wine. The fig leaves fruits. When you are fed by the wine of God. And by the fruits of the spirit. Of the figs. The fruits of God which is his word. The richness of his word. And the iniquity of the land is taken away. Because the Lord has restored. The full functioning of the Holy Man to, to enable us to watch, to enable us to pray, to deal with the iniquity of the land, whether your own land, or the land of your family, or the land of our nation, or our world. There's, there are a lot of things troubling our world. The iniquity must be taken away in one day. There are things troubling our nation. The iniquity will be taken away in one day when a true priest arrives with the Holy Man to me. My brother and my sister, the Lord is developing this grace in you and in me. He's calling us to the ministry of prayer. Two things are important. If we look at Leviticus 9, which we are not going to read now. The sin offering. The Lord said to Moses, there are certain things you will do that my glory be revealed. Two things to do for have my glory revealed. Number one, Sin offering. Number two, burnt offering. You must know him as the one that takes away sin. What was troubling Joshua? The sin. Filthy garment. Sin offering. Christ, the sin offering, deals with defile, defilement in the house. The Lord must cleanse our hearts. From every filthiness of the spirit and of the body and of the mind by consciously appropriating the blood of cleansing that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Knowing him as a sin bearer because he taketh away the sin of the world. Glory, hallelujah. He takes your sin away. Having known him as the sin bearer, you've got to know him as the burnt offering. The, off, the burnt offering is presenting your life to keep holy, to keep in consecration. Present yourself as living sacrifice. That means denying yourself. Say no to unrighteousness. Anytime you say no to unrighteousness, you are presenting your life as a burnt offering. Hallelujah! And as you stand on these two graces available, the Lord said to Moses, when Aaron does, does that, my glory shall appear to him. Amen. The glory of the Lord shall appear to you. To set you on course. To be an effective watchman. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord quicken you. May the Lord grace you. 
that the iniquity that troubles your earth be taken away in one day. The limitations of our, our lives be overthrown. The limitations of the church, the house of God, be overthrown. May we begin to pray for one another that the iniquity of this land be taken away. And the church comes into its place. Hallelujah. So that we can walk in the will of God. May the Lord bless you. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Let the Lord visit you individually. Visit us collectively. That we begin to function as a true house of prayer for all people. Oh, hallelujah. Let's bow our hearts. Call upon the name of the Lord. The Lord wants to strengthen you. The Lord wants to strengthen your capacity to be a watchman. The Lord wants you to stand on your watch. The Lord wants you to be effective as a prayer warrior. The Lord wants to open your eyes so that his work can be done in your earth, in your personal lives. He wants also to open your eyes so that his work can be done in the church. So that his work can be done in your environment, wherever you are. Whatever assignment you have to do in life, his work can be done there. On the earth, his work can be done. Living your spirit with us until your work on earth is done. Say, Lord, let your work in my life be done. Let every work you need to do in my life be done. Let the grace of the priesthood, the ministry of prayer, the grace, let the urim and the tumim, the life and perfection begin to come. Develop in me understanding to come before you with knowledge to know you, to know you, to know you, to know you. To know myself in the light of you. To know my neighbor in the way you, I, I need to know him. To know my environment in the way I need to know it. To know my job in the way I need to know it. To know my responsibility as a father, as a mother, as a husband, as a wife. To know my place and to do it. To know you, to know you, to know you is the cry of my heart. Spirit, reveal Jesus to me. The greatest revelation is to know him. Is to know him. Is to know the Savior, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Pour forth your spirit upon us, oh God. Pour forth your spirit upon us. Apprehend us, O oh God, that we may begin to know as we are known. Cause us, O oh God, to begin to grow in grace. To come to that place that the iniquity of this land be taken away. That every filthy garment, every defiled garment, any area with any aspect of consecration lost, any place of disobedience, defilements of any sort that is cleansing by the blood of the Lamb that is washing in His Word. Our lives can be cleansed with every filthiness of the spirit and of the body. Our bodies can be washed with pure water, the water of the truth. Our loins get about with truth. The truth of God we cleanse our inner parts that our disposition will be right. Hallelujah, Jesus.